Hey guys, and welcome to part two of the lightsaber tutorial. So this, we're going to be covering the texturing and lighting of our scene. So let's get set up with that. Um, first thing I'm going to add in will be a camera. So the camera is going to come in at the kind of angle that we were just looking at there. I'm going to change this to normal. We want to pull the camera out. Let's go to the camera view. G, maneuver it into position. Okay, I think we still want to rotate this a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it back slightly and up a little bit. Let's go back to the camera view. Okay, like that. All right. Um, I'm going to bring it back then because I want to use some focal length of the camera to zoom in so things don't look too close. So we'll come over to the camera, just the focal length, around 60 millimeters. It's okay. Now things look a bit funny, it looks like it's, it's rotated, not quite right. So we need to even out the camera again so things are flat. Okay, that's better. I'm going to rotate it a little bit on the z-axis. Right, I'm good with that. And now um, from Blender Render I want to change the Cycles Render. Use nodes, our background will be plain black. I don't want it to be generating any light. And then I'm also going to create a plane surface, which we'll just move up a little and we'll scale this. And we want to scale and then move it into position so that we cannot see any of the background. I just want to see the plane only. Um, so I think also by moving the camera back and increasing the focal length a bit more, we'll be able to make this plane smaller. Let's push the focal length in again. Okay, now select the plane. And scale this in the y axis. Bring this further back again. Increase the focal length and we'll move it down a little bit. Okay, now just maneuver this around so it's filling our view. Okay, select the camera. I'm going to rotate the camera so it points downwards a little bit. There, and that helps us with our plane immensely. So we can scale the plane down again a little bit. So that just fills our view. Scale on the Y. Okay. Now the plane's fill it, filling our view, the camera. I'm going to move out just a little bit more so we can see a bit more of the lightsaber. Okay, 
Okay, so there's our camera and our ground plane set up. Now we need to add some lights. So we're going to add two light sources to begin with. So we'll add a point, drag this up and move it over here. And shift and D, I'm going to duplicate that. Place another one in front, a little bit higher up. Come back to the camera view switch to a rendered output so now you can see we got some shadows there but they're kind of conflicting so what I'm going to do is turn off the, sh the cast shadows for one of those lights so now we're just going to have one shadow which looks a little better I'm going to grab hold of the camera again I'm going to move this camera so we can see all of the shadow that's looking good there Okay, so don't worry too much about the dark area at the front here because we're going to have some um, light from the lightsaber anyway. You uh, may just want to increase the strength of the rear light a little bit and I'm also going to shift it slightly towards the blue. Same with this front light. We'll increase the strength a little bit and we'll shift it slightly towards the blue. Not too much just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to add in a couple more lights. Come back into solid view here. Um, we'll create a new plane object which will scale to be quite narrow but long. And we'll move this into position over here. Get a little, little longer again. Then we're going to rotate it so it kind of directs at the lightsaber. Now we'll come over to our materials. We'll add a new material slot and we're going to call this the bar light. We'll change from diffuse to emission. Shift that tiny little bit towards the blue. Let's go back to our rendered view. It's view from the camera. Now we need to shift this bar light out of the way so that it's not in the view of the camera anymore. And then we can increase the strength of that light also a little bit. So that's going to give us some light to the front of our scene. And you can also choose as well whether this is going to cast shadows or not. So you may want to turn off shadows um, if you don't want it to be casting a shadow there or you can turn off the shadow on our other point lights so and now you're only getting the shadow coming from this bar light so it's up to you depending on what type of shadow that you want to get as to um, how you're gonna set set these things up so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll have this other shadow coming from the light. Um, and I think I'm going to turn off the cast shadows from this light. Okay. So it's not looking very metallic yet, and that's what we're going to work on next. So we're going to create a basic metallic object. So we'll select the lightsaber, create a new material slot, and we'll call this the base metal. Drag open a new window and switch to the node editor. Now here in the node editor we can begin to mix different types of materials together. So the moment we have a diffuse material and if we alter the color of this you'll see it changes the color over here in our main view. But um, we don't just want to adjust the color we also want to adjust how shiny this is as metal has a shiny surface to it. So we're going to add in a glossy shader and we're going to mix these together using a mix shader. So we'll drop in the mix shader here. And now we can mix these two materials together. You'll see that now we get a glossy effect over here. And if we adjust the roughness, you can choose um, how shiny this metal is going to be. So the less roughness you, you have, you see we get more of a reflection from that bar light 
um, and it's it's a sharper reflection. The more roughness you have, the less sharp that reflection basically becomes. So the rougher the material, the closer it will be to a diffuse material and less glossy. So I'm going to bring the roughness quite far back because it's going to be a quite a shiny metal surface. So you can see already by, by bringing that roughness back, we've already started to get quite a metallic look. Now we can also adjust here the factor um, of the mix. So a factor of zero means that it's all diffuse and a factor of 100 means it's all glossy. And we want to go somewhere a little bit below all glossy because we want a little bit of that diffuse color coming through. So maybe we'll go to 0.7. And then in the diffuse color, we want to knock that back so we get more of a metallic, silvery look. Okay. That's beginning to look quite metallic, but there's more that we can do to this to um, improve it and make it look even more metallic than this. So um, again, that's going to be done using the node editor, but before we get into that, we're going to need to do something to our mesh, which is unwrap it. So we're going to select our mesh, and I'm going to go to our front view. We're going to tab into edit mode. And the first thing we're going to want to do actually is, um, let's just get rid of these handles here. We're going to want to mark a seam. So I'm going to get edge select, shift and alt. And we'll grab that edge there and we'll go to mesh, edges, mark seam. So this is going to be the join in our texture and that's where it's going to be unwrapped from. So we'll go back to our front view and change from our node editor to UV image editor. Hit A to select all. Mesh, UV unwrap, smart UV project and OK. That will unwrap all of our mesh over here into separate parts. So once we've done that, back over to our node editor. We can bring this back to our camera view, go back into rendered view. And we can begin adding in nodes here, which are going to um, help create our effects. So first node we're going to add will be texture coordinates. And then the next node we're going to add will be a mapping node. And we're going to add an image texture node. So for the image texture, we have a metallic texture which you can download from the pack that goes together with this. So it's basically it's this metallic surface here. So it's going to help add some roughness to it. So we're going to choose UV, plug it into our vector in the mapping, and the vector is going to plug into the vector of the image texture. Now we can drag these out the way a little bit. And these are all going to go to a mix shader in a moment. We're just going to leave it as it is for now. So we have the glossy plugged into this mix shader. We also have diffuse plugged into that mix shader. I want to add a brightness and contrast, which is going to plug into the diffuse. And for now, I'm going to plug the color from the image texture into the color of the brightness and contrast. Okay. Now, if we zoom in over here, you'll see that we are starting to get some texturing to the metal surface. You can see it, it's got these shadows and, and highlights on it. And that's coming from the image texture that we just added. Now, um, 
if we adjust the mix in the mix shader here, if we were to bring that back, you'll see it will go purely to diffuse. And there we have our image texture mixed with the diffuse color. So these are the shadows and highlights that you're going to see around our um, metal surface. And again, like before, the more you drag this up, the more of a glossy mix you get coming into there. So it begins to give a bit more of a realistic look to the metal surface. It's It's got a little bit of rust to it, some imperfections. It's no longer a perfect metallic surface. And the more that you drag this up, the more glossiness we get and the less of that imperfections you get. So it's just a matter of adjusting that factor until you get the mix to be just right as to how you want it to look. So that's looking pretty good now. It's looking pretty metallic. Um, now we can also add into this a geometry node a color ramp I'm going to plug pointiness into the color ramp now if you hold down shift and control and you select one of these um, nodes you can kind of isolate that node so there's our image texture, there's our mapping, and so on. Um, so that's actually not turned on by default. So you need to turn that on in your user preferences under the add-ons. You want to make sure that the node wrangler is turned on. Now with node wrangler turned on, shift and control, and you select one of those nodes and it will isolate and show you that individual node, which is quite useful. So here in the color ramp, what we can actually do is drag these towards each other and we want to get highlights and shadows. So the parts which are dark are going to be the shadows, the parts which are white will be the highlights. Then we're going to add into here a mix shader. Let's just drag all of this out here. We'll drop that mix shader in to there and we'll plug the output of this into that mix shader. Now if we select the mix shader, and over then to our diffuse. It's helped just to subtly bring out some of the shadows and highlights. I'm just going to drag that mix shade of factor back a little bit to bring out some more of the detail of the texture. Okay, so there's our final material output. So that's looking pretty good and quite metallic. Now we've got some parts of this which are gold, so we're going to want to add those in. So the way we'll do that is, let's just jump back over into solid view. Oh, we have this hook area here, the kind of clip at the back there. I'm just going to select that. And we'll also apply that with the same base metal material. 
there. So that's also now the same color. Now we need to add in the gold areas. So we'll create new. Uh, make sure we have our lightsaber connected. Select it, create a new, choose base metal, and press the button next to it. That now creates its own copy. And we'll call this now the gold metal. Switch over to our node editor. And all we're going to need to do is change the glossiness color to be a more golden color. Back to our 3D view. Tab into edit mode, and now we just need to select the faces that we want to be that particular color. So I'm going to zoom in on this area here. Um, Shift and Alt, select all those edges, all these edges, all these edges, uh, sorry, faces, I mean, and all those faces there. Then we select our gold material and press Assign. Now we go to Rendered View, you'll see that those areas are now golden. However, we've got this um, gray reflections coming from somewhere which we need to deal with. So we'll open up our uh, node editor. Adjusting the roughness will help to Eliminate a little bit of that. It's coming from a reflection. So also reducing the factor of the mix may help. I'm actually going to remove these as they are no longer needed. Remove that mix shader. I'm going to plug this straight into there. And we'll drag that slightly more up towards the glossy area. So now gets rid of some more of that gray. We'll drag down the roughness a little bit. Bring back some more of those reflections. Okay. Now another area which is this gold color is also around the top of the control box. So we'll select those parts, face select, shift and alt, grab these two loops, and then we'll grab all of the faces along the top of here. And along the top of here. Shift and Alt will also select these edges. Um, because we want these raised bumps on the control panel to also be the gold color as well. And just hold down shift as we go along and select all of these. OK, 
Okay, so that's all of our edges. Select gold material, press assign. We can come back to our camera, back to a rendered view. And now we have that gold also applied to the control panel at the top. So things are starting to look pretty good. Now I want to make my base metal just a little bit darker. It's a little too bright. So I'll come over to the node editor. Then our brightness and contrast, I'm going to just knock the brightness down a little bit. and also knock the contrast down a little bit. And that just brings it back to a slightly more metallic looking color. So it's not quite as gray as it was. It's now a little bit more darker and closer to a kind of dark gray gunmetal color. You may also want to do the same with the gold. If you want to tone that down a little bit, knock down the brightness slightly and the contrast. Right, and now we're going to add in the texture for our base plane. So we'll come back out of edit mode, select our base plane there, create a new material, we'll call this a floor material. This one's going to be very basic, mix shader. A glossy shader plugged into that. Switch back to our rendered view. I'm going to knock down the roughness a little bit. I'm going to change the color. Make that darker. And also we'll make our diffuse color a little darker. So by having a darker um, ground surface, you'll see that it, um, it's throwing less light into the scene, so there's less reflection. So um, you want to have some light bouncing off of that ground because it helps to make our metal look more metallic. So you want some light reflecting off of that ground surface. I'd also want the reflections coming from the floor as well. Right, so we're almost ready now to actually turn on the lightsaber at the um, beam. So to add the beam, it's just a very easy modeling job. Create a cylinder which will scale down, we'll rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis. Go to a right side view and we want to position the beam inside of the emitter hole where our beam is going to be coming from, from inside the lightsaber. Pretty much center that up if you can. Right, and then I'm going to grab the scale handles, 
need to scale it on the blue axis. Drag it out until it's about the length that you would want the lightsaber to be. So that will be about right for us. We'll come back to the camera view. I'm going to move the camera a little bit so that we'll be able to see more of the actual lightsaber itself, more of the beam. Okay, select the beam, create a new material, which we will name beam. This is just going to be a very basic emission material. Change the color to a little bit below green there. Change this now to rendered. Right, so that's not looking quite right yet. So we want to up the strength until it's white or almost white. But our reflections, all of our reflected light will still actually be green. Now we can go back to our floor there and we can adjust maybe the mix. Don't want quite as much reflection coming from the floor. That's a little bit better. Okay. So we're basically done now with the um, setup and lighting and texturing. Um, so what we're going to move on to next will be the compositing part of, of this. Um, and I'm actually going to put that into a separate tutorial. I thought this would just be a, a two-part tutorial, but um, the final one will just be the compositing, adding the blurs around here, and setting up the final render.